everyone. Today we got to play The Last Will. Now, um, we got one of this, this game out. It is a little bit older, not quite a new release, but we did it because we wanted to add um, an interesting combination that we heard is this game along with the Prodigals Club. Now, well, before we get into- It's also part of the collection, so we're going to go through the whole collection. And, I mean, so. yes, eventually. So. Um, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell because board games are amazing and you would like to see more information specifically about this combo um, and other future games that we have in the works. All right, so um, talking about The Last Will, Randy, can you give us a little bit more information I about can. just this game? There's actually two entries for it, interestingly enough, on Board Game Geek. I'm not sure why. Uh, there's a 2011 entry, which is the original. And then there's a 2016 uh, release of it, and I'm not sure what that one is. It's the, the picture is in a different language, so I'm not sure if that one is combining the expansion in with the base and it was relaunched as that. But there's a uh, expansion, uh, getting sacked, I believe, is the name of the expansion that is for this. Uh, it has a current board game geek rating of 7.2, but the 2016 one has a rating of 7.4, uh, but it doesn't have a rank on the, the 2016 one. This one is ranked 513. Uh, it's a two to five player game, a, uh, average length of 45 to 75 minutes, which is probably right once the game actually got started. Um, <clears throat> and then age is uh, 14 and up. I can't, I mean, the theme is a little dark and the iconography of it, I guess would be the reason it would be 14 up. Because it is kind of well, the box says thirteen up. So oh, so okay. So they give you a year for good behavior, I guess. <laughs> um, designed by Vladimir Sushi, art is by Tomas Kusarovsky, and it's published by Czech Games Edition or CGE. Uh, MSRP for this is forty nine ninety five. Now this version is harder to find. It, I sell it on Cardhouse. It's still out in Cardhouse for $35.99. So if you want it, they have it in stock there. Uh, I didn't see it at Miniature Market. And I think Amazon still has it as well, but it was higher. Okay. Let's talk about the quality of components. So you do end up with card more money. Um, I do actually like the cardboard money because it actually has like um, a little symbol here. Um, and they're differentiating by colors. And so I think that was kind of fun. Um, but it is still cardboard money, so yeah. like let's well, caveat. But it is good thickness, it's and it's fine. Better than paper money. Okay, um, and then Randy obviously liked this game well enough to actually sleep the cards, um, and the the. The thickness feels fine, but there is no linen finish whatsoever. Uh, then you do you see uh, top hat uh, meeples, kind of. Um, I appreciate a good top hat. I don't know about mm -hmm. you guys. Um, and But other than that, it's actually pretty generic. Um, there are quite a few cards. You have standard. Now, what's, what's funny... Um, I mean, these are okay. I think these have a slight linen finish is the player yeah, board. Yeah, they have a slight linen finish, very slight. Very slight. Um, so overall quality components, I'm actually probably going to give this a six. There's not, well, actually, no, five and a half. Like it's barely more than Catan. I mean, you got a board. So what are you thinking? So as far as the components, I, I mean, the wood, the wooden hats are nicer than Catan. I think the cards are nicer than Catan and they're not extremely nice, but they're nicer than Catan. And I do like the money as far as the as if I'm gonna to have to use cardboard money. I, yeah, it's, it's one of the better cardboard money. money that we've seen. I will probably go ahead and give it a six for that reason. Okay. What about you? What are you thinking? Well, my father in law went to the I started to say the Czech Republic. He went to the Ukraine the Ukraine a couple times. And this does look very similar to the money. So I'm impressed with the money. I've only played Catan the one time, so I I really can't compare it to Catan. But I do like that the hat is kind of a homage to Monopoly, which we all hate. Um, I don't know. I think it's supposed to be more to the fact that the, these people are well-to-do and it's yeah they have the, they uh, have a lot the of top hats and all the uh, pictures yeah. Well, you kind of got to yeah. be well-to-do to have a Monopoly too. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, what do you give Catan a five? Five. It's halfway again. Yeah. The base Catan. Base Catan. So six and a half, sure. Okay. okay. All right. So now let's actually talk about the theme. Now, the theme 
<laughs> I enjoyed the theme. All right. So basically, you are a rich, well-to-do person, and you were trying to spend well, you're all in the, your money. The, what, the son of a rich, well-to-do person who mm -hmm. passed away, and you were trying to earn your keep in the will. Ah. And in order to do that, you have to spend all your money that they give you in order to, to get your inheritance. So basically, it's a uh, it's what's that illogical. movie? Brewster's Millions, the game. Yes. Um, so anyway, um, so that that's the theme of the game. I, you know, in most games, you're trying to earn money, so it's kind of fun to be like, I need to spend all the money. I don't want this. Give it. Take it, you know. Um, that actually part is actually a little bit of fun for me. I kind of mm -hmm. like that. Um, I do like the artwork. Uh, I think it's fun and I think it's cute. Um, this guy's mustache is absolutely amazing. I don't know about you. <laughs> I don't like mustaches, but I think they did a good job there. I think I don't know. Um, and I love like the silhouettes on the back of the cards. I think that's actually really beautiful artwork. Yeah. Um, I always enjoy some oh, I love the board and the fact the panorama yeah. effect of the board. I, I think they the art in this is really well done. Yeah, I think they did a fantastic job with the art. I actually really enjoy the theme. I'm actually gonna give this an eight. I love the art and I think it's absolutely fun a fun theme. I, I'm actually gonna give it a nine. I oh, think wow. the uh just the sheer fun of the theme brings it up for me. I mean there's it's it is one it, one of them we had on our most unique list top 10 and i think it is it's a fun theme it's it's a little dark in the fact that you're you're trying to basically earn the money from your inheritance you know but you're trying to spend and blow all your money without ever taking possession of anything at the end so you want to have no possessions and you know it's i like the, the how they've integrated that into the gameplay i think they've done an outstanding job yeah, I mean, I, I'm not mad that you gave it a nine. Like, I, I can see that, and I totally understand why. Um, I, What about you? What are you thinking? I would like it a whole lot better if all of your relatives in the generation after you had made you angry, and you were trying to <laughs> spend their inheritance. <laughs> see, now that's a game I can get behind. Yeah. So <laughs> I, said, I, I said it was his father. It's his uncle. His rich uncle. I'm gonna give it a couple of dings for the for the not being just vindictive enough and give it an eight. Well, in essence, we're all nieces and nephews of this rich uncle, so we are the nasty relatives. So we can make it as thematic as we wanted there. <laughs> oh man, is that why you won? Oh no, wait, she so won. She won. <laughs> Listen, I'm a redhead, and sometimes it comes out. So take... they say redheads don't have souls, and they don't feel anesthesia very well either. So yeah, we actually have a really high pain tolerance. All right, um, all right. So um, let's move on to the actual rule book. So, um, Randy, I don't. We didn't have to read this both times did, we played did it. Another give it a score. Yeah, she gave it an eight. Okay. Uh, so the rule book. Uh, we, the reason why we played it is we played it a lot back in the day. Uh, and we just recently played it again. So, uh, but the rule book is actually pretty well done. It, I, it's another CGE one. CGE has a history with like uh, the Galaxy Trucker having fun rule books. This one has a fun rule book where they have commentary that's you know entertaining little tidbits in it. I like that. It's uh, the the book is itself is twelve pages long. Uh, it's a good size. It's about the size of the box. A little smaller. It's a kind of a half cover, but then it goes into the backstory of your, about your uncle's death and all of that. And then the contents, it does show the pictures of the items, which is uh, something. I actually watched a video the other day where people, somebody listed their pet peeve, and it was not having the pictures. And I'm like, I know what you're saying. I feel your pain, because <laughs> this is a pet peeve. I, I could do a whole video on my pet peeves, <laughs> but that is definitely Listen, one of them. You could do a whole YouTube channel just on your pet peeves. <laughs> Uh -huh. Or food you won't eat. <laughs> <laughs> Just pick a topic, any topic. I can do a whole channel on it. Uh, but yeah, the the sections are well uh, divided. Each one of them has a little blurb <laughs> about you know kind of a kick story of it, which is kind of interesting. It's not you know some of them are more entertaining than others, but you know they're they're all supposed to be kind of fun. So one of them's about taking your dog to dinner or taking your horse to the theater. And, you know, so there's little fun things in there like that. And they're in the game. So I, I think it's a fun read. It's not too heavy. It doesn't take itself too seriously. 
but it, it gets the point across and it's got a really nice iconography cheat sheet on the back. There aren't cheat sheets in the game. That's the only thing I don't like. Uh, it's not really neat it's, though. Well, it is because there's a lot of iconography and then you're always, well, what does that mean? Well, the reason I know is because it's on here. Oh, well, see, there you go. But then I, one person has to like answer all those questions because they've never, what's that mean? Not that it would have mattered if you had cheat sheet in front of you. You still <laughs> was it, what does that mean? And I haven't been looking on here. <laughs> so I'm going to give it a, probably an eight still because it wouldn't have mattered whether it was a cheat sheet. I was still in bed. Okay. All right. So now let's actually talk about the gameplay. So the gameplay is, is that everyone starts out, um, they have to, they have their little round circles and then based on first or, uh, turn order, you're going to place on this board here. I mean, he's going to put it up for you. Um, and so then you have to, so the top row is showing you the cards that, that you would get if you choose that action. The second one is the number of workers that you would end up get to use to place during the round. And the bottom is the number of actions that you get to use on your player board or, you know, play cards with. Okay. So you're going to pick that. So based on that, so I particularly, some of my two favorites is I get two cards. Now there are four decks for me to choose my cards from. Um, and so based on what I need. So um, in this particular instance, we're towards the end of the game. And so I figure straight actions to end up used for money might be very beneficial to me. So I'm going to take these cards here, but I don't have to stick with one. So maybe I also want a um, guest or a dog or a pet or whatever's in this blue card, which is basically, um, you know, different, um, there's guests, there's dogs, there's horses, there's cooks, there's chefs, there's butlers. So just depending on what this card has. So I'm going to take these two cards, okay? And then everyone else is going to take their turn. So Randy, you get one card. Oh, thank you. No, you get yeah. one card and one hat. But you get four actions. I, no, I don't want that one. Give me, <laughs> let me pick. I'm going to go first because I want to beat you. Okay, so you get five cards. Oh, now I only get one action. I'm going to go here. I won't take any cards. All right. Heather's going to take two cards. Heather, take your two cards. <laughs> All right. So then... Um, you know what these are, don't you? Yeah. These because... are financial liabilities. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you you also, can't have a wife other... without it costing you money. You can't have a horse without it costing yeah. you money. The other Fair decks enough. that you get to choose from are properties, which there's <laughs> two kinds. There's mansions and farms. And then there's also basically servants that you can get that will let you spend money or give you ongoing effect abilities. Okay, so once everyone places that particular token and they've gotten the cards that they need, then they're going to go off with this is now the turn order. So now um, purple is going to go first. These. So we have action spaces. Oh, it's you. So first, no, I'm first. So first thing is, is one of the actions that you could take is then to decide to change the real estate market. If you go here, um, you will notice that you there are different um, tokens that you can move around. So maybe I want the farms to cost more because I know I'm going to buy a farm this go around. And remember, we're trying to spend money, right? Or trying to lose all of our money. So I want to make the properties I'm buying more expensive and the things I'm selling um, worth less. So um, and then maybe I'm selling that. Okay, so that may be one action that I do. Another action here is I can actually go here um, and spend a worker to draw a card off the deck if I so choose. Um, the next one is, is that you get to extend your board. So you can go here and extend your board. Um, so that's pretty straightforward. The next action is you can just put a worker there and spend two money, okay? Maybe you have a worker and the, everyone else took the actions that you wanted. And this happened before. Um, especially when you start dealing with the higher player counts of five and things well, like that. Well, that and I had a card that let me get an additional three money every time I went to the theater. So right. every time I played a theater card or went there, I could blow another three money. Yeah, so five for a one action is actually not a bad ratio. All right, and then you got to realize you don't start the game with seven, seven seven money. Well, so. it, if you're playing this like the first time yeah. play, after that they have cards to randomize how much money you start with. Okay, all right, and then, so then I can also draw any of the cards here. Now the only, the other cards are just like the cards that you draw, except for there is this particular card that does get replaced back in that same spot. If you don't spend it that round, you lose it. Basically, it's a free, um, it's a wild card for any of those, the cooks, the chefs, the dogs, the stables. So basically you get to use it anywhere. Um, so that's, it's a wild bit. 
All right, so once I end up placing my two, so maybe I'm going to, I'll play with the real estate market and then I'm gonna end up placing Well, you would play like yours, this. I would play mine and we'd go around. You don't Correct. play them both together. Well, that's what I meant, okay. All right, so I'll go and get me another extension for my board because I'm out of rooms. Jeez, Heather. I'm gonna take a ball because I wanna spend some money. All right, and I guess I'm gonna get me a carriage because those were good for me. Okay. I'm going on a boat trip. All right. So next thing up is the actual <coughs> action. So for an example, I'm first player. I have two actions, but on my board, I've been able to get people that actually had additional actions. So I can use those people um, and I'm going to have to spend one money for that, for this particular one. And then I get four actions now. Now the four actions, um, I can trigger cards that already have on the board. So like this one, I could trigger this one and spend five money, or I can use that to buy and sell property. So um, if I were to have a property card, um, so basically this one is, is I would um, sell this or uh, buy this for 16. So it's a green, so plus three. So it would end up buying it for 19 and I would place it on my board. Now, that is considered an action. Now, selling it is the same way. So it's, I have 16 on here, and then I go over here to my real estate market um, and make that modification, and that's what I sell it for. So that's another action you could take. Um, the other one is actually triggering the farm. So right now, uh, because I don't have any stable or horses on my farm, it costs me three to upkeep. Um, so then I could just spend the action, spend three money, and that's upkeeping my farm. Um, and then you also have the single um, once action kind of card. So only for one time. So it's not something I keep on my board, but luckily I don't have to have the space either. Like I can spend this and spend three. So um, that's pretty straightforward. Um, I think that covers all of well, the actions. The, the properties, there's two, the two differences. The farm basically does not depreciate in value. Oh, right. You have to spend money. You have to use it to, as an action to spend money. But when you sell it, you're going to get the full value of that building back, which you have to sell it because you cannot end the game with any possessions. So you have to sell that building before the end of the game. So well, it auto it. sells at the end of the game too. Yeah, so. And so if you didn't sell it before, you would automatically lose, or unless you manage to have less money than everybody else, which is unlikely to happen if you have a building. Well, I mean, so it's possible. Yeah, so you'll want to use it while you have it to burn money because if you add the farm animals to it, it's going to keep accumulating more and more money that you can spend with it, which is good. But then you get dinged with it at the end if you don't get rid of it. The other kind of the buildings, the mansions, actually depreciate in value. So they're, they you can use them to spend money, but they don't do it as effectively as the farms do. But they the, be, the better value is at the end, you can sell them back for much less money than what you paid for it. So they're a good way of burning money. But again, you do have to sell them or else you're going to get that money back at the end of the game. So those that's the differences between the two. And then there's a whole bunch of these worker cards, the, uh, the servants, that will benefit you throughout the game by giving you additional actions or giving you additional abilities that you might be able to chain with your abilities, like ones that re increase or decrease the value of your property or give you free actions for buying and selling property. So there's lots of different cards that can affect the, the gameplay. Yeah. Um, but I think that covers the gen that that's one round. You continue for seven rounds and whoever has the least amount of money wins the game. Um, one little caveat is so, but once someone goes completely broke, the game does end that round. So if someone were in this case, like we, we ended the game at round six because on round six, we had no money. Yeah. So um, we, we actually ended up going into debt. So that was fine. And whoever has the most debt is the one who wins. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, um, so overall, things I like. Um, like I said, like I mentioned earlier, I like the theme because you're actually trying to get rid of money and that's uh, kind of an unusual thing. Normally you're trying to like, I need every penny. No, this one's, I'm like, go away. So I do like that. I appreciate that quite a bit. Um, I think they did a really good job of, it, the game makes sense, right? You're trying to, you know, enjoy the money that you have and spend it as much as possible. Um, I like it. And I think it's, um, I think it's really good. I think I'm going <laughs> to give this a seven. Oh, wow. That's not nearly as high as I thought it was Well, going. so the thing is, is I've played this 
we got to play this with the Prodigals yeah. Club. Yeah. And when you compare the two, <laughs> yeah. um, it's kind of not fair for this reason. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, uh, okay, well, how did you feel about it before be, you played the Prodigals I'll Club? I'll be definitely rating this one more fairly than that, I think. Okay, fine. I'll give it an eight. I really do enjoy it. But when you act. Okay. All right. It's like playing Seven Wonders Duel without the whatever. Addition. It's like it's playing it's playing um it's playing viticulture without, without the dogs. expansion and not yeah. knowing that you Yeah. Okay, yeah. So we had not gotten to play this with Prodigal's Club for a long time. I've had both I had never played Prodigal's Club at all. I don't want to give too much away of that review, but I think Miranda's opinions already kind of spoiled it a bit. Uh but this game by itself I still think is one of the better worker placement games out there. It has engine building in it, which is something that you don't see a lot of in a lot of the worker placement games. Now, uh, Waterdeep has some of that, and that's why I like Waterdeep as well as I do. This one, I think you you have temporary engine building. Like, you know, you can you, you can overbuild your your things and you almost have to because there's not enough spots to build things. And, but the fact is, is you can build them selectively at the times when you need them. Like I needed the ones that benefited the mansions early in the game. Once I sold my mansions, they had no value, so I had to overbuild them. So you, you got the strategy. Wait, of, you can overbuild? Yes. So you can plan your strategy around, okay, I need to have these things, but you know, you're limited to the number of spaces and there's only one space to get additional rooms. That space is key in this game. Uh, timing when you go to get it because you're going to need extra rooms. It's almost a given, but you don't you can't do it every round because it's going to tie up one of your workers. So there's the balancing of getting cars and getting workers and getting actions that you have to manage, and I really it's appreciate tight. that. Yes, it's very tight, and you have to do it in a way that's the most effective for you for that round, but also consider the tar turn order based upon what your choices you make are. So there's a lot of considerations just in that initial placement of where I'm going to place my token. You almost have to know what you're going to do for the whole round already. Yeah, pretty much. And uh, then it obviously can be impacted by what your opponents do by taking cards that you might have wanted uh, or taking spaces that you needed. So you have to work around that. So I think there's a lot of meat to this game. We, we still loved it until we played the future expansion with the inclusion of it with Product Club, which has its own pros and cons, we'll talk about in another video. But by itself, I still think this game is a solid eight, eight to eight and a half. I, I think it's a wonderful game. Uh, I think it's well made, well designed, and I don't think Prodigal Club would have even existed if it wasn't for this game. No, I, I, I get it, and it, it is good, and there's a lot of good things that are going on with this <clears> game. <throat> um, it, and, and the comparison I made is accurate. It's like Viticulture without the Tuscany expansion. Uh, I, I would definitely prefer this by itself to, to Viticulture by itself. Rob would argue maybe. Well, but... I, mean, I mean in comparison to what, when you add it together. Yeah. It, that's the loss. And so since because we just played it. It's fresh. It's yeah. fresh. And I'm like, oh, but I want to. Do all the other things too. No, but I still had a lot of fun. I don't yeah. want to distract. I don't want to distract from that. So this was well, a lot of fun. Given the fact what about you? Because you haven't ahead. played the expansion. What did you think? Well, about it? I haven't played this either. Um, I'm going to harken back just a little bit to theme, because this this is very Gilded Age. We're going to live our lives in as conspicuous a manner as possible. We're going to have guests come to our home, and they're going to see just how rich we are. Um, never mind whether or not we're going to get to the end of our lives and still have any money. Maybe we won't. Well, actually, they aren't going to know that, right? So it feels a little bit Downton Abbey-ish. Um, but I think that's a positive. Yeah. And the tightness of the how many cards, how many actions, and how many, you know, meeples really just kind of drives that home. Just how close... Just how close the, the books were running in a state like that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I was a little bit surprised, not 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 a lot, that we didn't make it to the seventh round. Um, I always want a worker placement game to have one more round than it does, always, because I 
even though I recognized that I had an engine, I had to sell it off. That was a good little engine here. Wait a minute. I got to gotta sell it. Um, no, that's the hardest part. It's like, oh my engine's wait a minute. What? Well, and only six and only six rounds to 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 gear it up and it was it was very very the, the mechanism is very tight and I like that. Two years ago I would have hated that. <laughs> <laughs> but um I I this is a game I would love to play again. I feel about this kind of like I do about Oracles of Delphi. It's, it's not a perfect game, but I enjoy it every time we play it and we never get to play it often enough. Um, I'll play this with you. Yeah. But but this just, was even better than that okay. because that's just a pick up and put down and this this was, there was some thinking involved here. I like this. I would give it an 8.7. Yeah. And okay. the, the other thing I like is there's like just some of the subtle things in the cards. Like I had a property, a mansion that had a ton of step levels to depreciate, but if you got a cook it would let you depreciate it three times automatically. And I'm like, what kind of cook are you hiring? That, that cook was burning your house down. <laughs> like, I, I like that because I was making up a That's story in my head. Stick nine in the wheel. Yeah, I was making a story in my head about this cook that's destroying my kitchen. And I thought that was amazing. I mean, it's just Listen, little subtle things like that. All my farms, like they cost so much money with the seeds and the dogs. I was like, man, they must be having like, top-notch fee mm -hmm. they must have gold uh you know trappings and i was cracking you know, like i don't know i i think you're right though it's like we got the million dollar combo <laughs> and yeah and not the two hundred thousand dollar one <laughs> <laughs> yeah um so yeah no it's it was definitely a lot of fun well guys thank you so much for joining us we had an absolute blast tonight and hopefully you'll come hang out with us again we'll catch you guys later bye, bye.